In this session, we are going to cover the cloud-based business models. Now, the cloud industry has become a huge industry worth a multi-billion, you know, multi-billion dollar industry, actually, probably a multi-trillion dollar industry if we look at the overall landscape uh, that comprises the, the software as a services, platform as a services, and infrastructure as a service. So we're going to look at uh, those three main cloud-based business models. Indeed, cloud-based business models, again, can be broken down in software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. We're going to see what's the main difference between those uh, cloud-based business models, what are the advantages and disadvantages of running one or the other, and also what's the main business model behind them. Now, when it comes to software as a service, software as a service has become a huge industry because uh, the paradigm of software in the last decade, actually in the last two decades, but especially in the last decade has changed completely. So we moved from an on-premise software uh, development framework to instead a much more agile software development framework where companies can actually use uh, software run by other organizations to run a service without having to host this service on their own premises and therefore by having a much more agile infrastructure of course when you look at uh, the the SaaS um, you know services that uh, many companies use to run their own business, especially when it comes to startups, there is pretty much a, a software as a service for for anything, so an application for for anything from uh, email uh, you know mm, providing uh, like a newsletter to running uh, like a CMS to many other things so uh, anything that the company does today a startup does today can be sort of externalized through a software as a service a component which pretty much is a, a company uh, that can benefit from just handling the applications that the software as a service is providing. In other words, on the one side, you have the software as a service provider who's, who's handling uh, all the stuff at the back end behind the, the applications. And, you know, whether or not is managing really the whole flow, in most cases, really the provider of the application. So the software as a service company is actually handling most probably only the, 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 the platform behind it. In some other cases, especially at enterprise level, there are some companies who handle much more. But yet the infrastructure, as we'll see in most cases, is actually externalized. But let's go step by step now. When it comes to the software as a service, again, uh, what's important here to understand is the provider of the service just provides the application. So, for instance, if you are running a CRM, so a way and a tool to manage the, 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 the leads that your company uh, generates, uh, you're getting, imagine the case of a company like Salesforce, you're getting an application or a set of applications for a monthly subscription fee. Now, this is usually very convenient because you don't have to actually run this software on your own premises. You can uh, just uh, log into the, the platform of the, the software as service provider and you find all the applications that you need to run your business. And that's pretty much it. So it's very agile organization, especially for startups who can change and can fluidly uh, adopt one application or the other. Of course, as you can imagine, the, advantage, the disadvantage of that is also that uh, you can use the applications um, for, the, for the use cases for which those have been thought. So there is not much a way for you to customize it. Of course, you can, you, uh, you can ask the software as a service provider to add some features or to uh, move faster in the, in the product development um, you know, roadmap, especially if you're an enterprise level business as an enterprise customer, you can ask the software as a service provider to speed up the roadmap of the, the product development. But in many cases, actually, you know, the applications that you have on top of uh, the SaaS service are given. So the use cases that you can handle are given and you can try to integrate various uh, software as a service applications to create a unique flow for your company and many companies do that. And while it may be convenient, though, it can also get very, very messy when you start managing many applications. That's why also uh, for instance, a tool that uh, facilitate the integration between various SaaS services. Think of the case of a company like, uh, like Zapier, uh, 
uh, now they have a lot of success as of now because of course they facilitate the integrations between services that otherwise are managed and handled separately separately between uh, within like a startup or a company or an organization so again the software as a service the main paradigm is a paradigm is that you have a service provider who usually is providing you know the applications to the company the company is paying a monthly bill and it's a subscription which keeps it uh, very flexible for the company who's using the service and it can be um, you know a great because you don't have to develop this application so for instance if you have to handle your your leads or for instance if you have to publish your content or for instance if you have to do many other things that uh, um, you know comprise the, the 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 activities that an enterprise has to follow in terms of sales marketing administration but also it you can leverage on software applications and there is pretty much an application for most anything because the market is huge and uh, now you have multi-billion dollar companies like salesforce and many other companies that are leading the pack now if we move from a SaaS uh, model to a uh, platform as a service model to a pass model you see that here things are slightly different in a pass model the main difference is that the the company who gets the service so mm, the, who is benefiting from the service is not only handling the application uh, like uh, in the case of the SaaS, is also handling the data behind them why does it make a difference well because in this case if you're handling the data as a, a someone who is using the service as a user as a customer you can actually customize those applications in many other ways so you have much more flexibility of course the platform as a service uh, model where the the service provider instead is going to manage all the other stuff and again it can be that the service provider is handling part of the pipeline or uh, the old pipeline depend on the on the company who is providing the service but on the other hand the uh, the user of the service is instead able to customize much more uh, the, the applications and the data because as you can imagine if you have access to the data you can use the data to build applications on top of it so pretty much what happens is that the service provider is offering to the to the user a framework and a platform to develop uh, applications on top of this platform so there is much more flexibility as you can imagine though here the, the audience changes so where in the in the SaaS model uh, where you have the applications uh, which are already packaged and um, are already uh, you know uh, built uh, on top of, uh, of uh, you know facilitated uh, UX uh, you have a set of customers who are not necessarily technical indeed many software as a service applications are you know uh, sold to to sales people to marketing people so or people that are not necessarily technical when instead it comes to a platform as a service model your audience is going to change because it's going to go especially toward a very technical uh, audience or at least uh, audience who is able to handle and to develop applications so it's going to be more toward the IT or the, the development um, you know department of of the 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 target company so this is going to change completely the model and in the past as a service also here usually you have uh, you know uh, both a model of subscription and also consumption based on the data and applications that are built on top of the platform now if we move to a third model which is the yas or like the infrastructure as a service here instead the service provider is handling uh, only the part related to to the network the, the storage the servers and also the the virtualizations which enable you to actually build uh, much more uh, customized applications on top of this infrastructure so the main difference of course is that when we move from the the platform as a service to the infrastructure as a service as you can imagine here the company uh, the customer the user of the service is going to be able to handle way way more so it's going to be able to actually uh, produce um, applications uh, which are way more complex indeed on top of uh, an infrastructure as a service you can build uh, both uh, a platform as a service which you can offer to your customer even though in this case you would move more on an enterprise level or like business to business level service or if um, if uh, you also have uh, you know infrastructure as a service you can decide instead to uh, cover the whole funnel for for the customer and uh, offer them a software as a service uh, you know applications so 
depending on the kind of business that you want to run uh, that's how you you can you can move forward and key examples uh, of that of course is a company large uh, cloud providers like uh, amazon aws uh, microsoft azure, azure uh, or for instance <clears throat> The, the Google Cloud, so all those companies that offer the underlying infrastructure for other companies to build upon very customized applications or very customized platforms that they can use and they can sell to, to, to other potential customers or they can use for their own infrastructure. And the, also here, the main business model, the, the main revenue models of the infrastructure as a service is both a subscription, but it's also based a lot on consumption. So there is both like a formula of a subscription and pay as you go. So the, for the data that, um, let's say for the infrastructure that you use, that's what you pay. So those are the main differences. Those are the main cloud business models. Again, you have the software as a service where the provider ends all, or the whole pipeline except the applications which instead are given to the customer with a fixed UX that and the customer can require you know, features uh, and new um, uh, development on top of this application, but it it has minimum ability to customize unless you work in an enterprise level and in that case the client can ask uh, way more and uh, much more customizations because that's the nature of the, the relationship with the, with the enterprise customer but yet in this case the main formula is a subscription um, business uh, in few other cases can be based both on subscription and consumption and then we move to uh, a pass model and let's remember that in the software as a service model the limitations are of course a little bit security because you don't handle the data and of course the lack of customization because you don't handle the development of the software even though the software is interface is much much simpler it's going to be something that can be used by the whole company in the past instead again the company is gonna uh, the, the provider of the service is going to provide to the customer a platform for developing applications here the advantage is that you have much more customizations However, the platform is going to be uh, skewed toward the uh, technical uh, departments of your company that will actually develop applications for the various departments of your company. So as you can imagine, it requires uh, more effort, uh, but it has the, uh, the advantage of uh, you know, potentially being customized and so that uh, the development team within the company can build applications for various levels and for various departments of the company. And then you move to an infrastructure as a service. And also here, the pass is primarily subscription driven, in some cases, consumption driven. And then you, we move to the infrastructure as a service where instead the provider uh, just gives the infrastructure and then on the other side, the customer is gonna handle everything else that relates to really building up uh, you know, the, 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 the platform that can be used in, in various ways, either, either uh, for within the company or it can be sold as a service either to other paths or even develop like applications on top of this infrastructure and be sold as a, as a software as a service, depending on the business of the, the customer. And those are the main cloud business models.